Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so excited. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Today is a great day. Ah, no. Because you know what? You already have a testimony. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Father, we receive right now. Make this declaration with me. Say, Lord, I demand now for my daily bread. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God, praise God. Glory to the Lord, glory to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And we love you, Lord. We just thank you for this time of refreshing, receiving your truth. And I declare right now, burdens, every burden in your heart, every burden is removed now. Every yoke is destroyed. Everything that has caused limitation in your life. Hey, listen, hey, is gone in Jesus name amen someone just felt something leave you yeah you're free you're free in the name of the Lord Jesus praise God yeah I was sharing something with you yesterday about about walking in faith and fulfilling prophecies I was giving the example of a land and so now now miraculously you've bought and, and you know the funny thing about it it's the way it's going to happen it, it's going to happen so naturally and so it, <laughs> if you live by faith already you understand what i'm talking about because when you look back it, it's like everything explains everything but you see before then you couldn't even see all these things now that's how you walk with god the moment you find yourself struggling to fulfill a prophecy, you're out of line with that prophecy. But learn to yield to the Spirit of God. So now, by, by the power of God, you've bought the land. So what do I do next? Relax. He told you this year, you'll, buy, you'll build a house, right? He didn't just say you'll buy a land. He said you'll build that. Yes, that's what he said, I'll build it. Okay, relax. The first step is accomplished. Now you're doing your stuff and suddenly an architect that you know shows up. He said, come out now. How is everything? You know? Then you guys start talking and, and talking and, and then it clicks to your heart. Why are you talking? It clicks to your heart. Let him build your house. Let him build your house. And then he said, come on. I just bought a land and um, I want to build. He said, ah, really? Ah, that's why we're here now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, where's the land? Where's the land? Where's the document? You know, and, and, and listen, make sure the fact that God is leading you, make sure you perfect everything that needs to be perfected. If it's land document, make sure you get every details that you need. Cross every T, sign every document. Don't let one sleep. I say it's God now. After all, it's God now. No, sir. Remember, there is a devil out there that wants to corrupt your testimony. Don't give him any room. Don't give him any room. If someone blesses you with a car, woo, glory, sign the papers, change of ownership, do it immediately. You say, well, the person gave me now, so must I? Yes, you must. You must. Because, you see, the angel that brought that thing, brought it to your name. So you must change it to your name. If you don't change it to your name, you will not understand the purpose of that thing will not be established in your life. You know, some of you do that. Someone gives you a car and you just feel, ah, let's give my car now. I don't need to change the name now. I'll just be using it. No, if you believe that came from God, then it must carry your name. I'm telling you spiritual truth. It must carry, if it doesn't carry your name, it cannot be established. Because angels walk by names. They are precise. God says, take this blessing to our tuba judge. It's a tuba judge they are looking for. If the document doesn't bear a tuba judge, there's a problem. Are you hearing? There's a problem. Because that's how spirits work. This, see, God is too accurate. He, he speaks by names. He calls everything by their name. He does, God doesn't uh, go to that, my son. That's one that is living in that uh, corner. You know, when you go straight, that's not how God speaks. 
He calls your name. Go to so and so person. Even if he's going to give a further description, he will speak with a name. So hear me. If God helps you purchase a thing, make sure your name is on it. Don't say, eh, I don't want eh, I don't want people to know that you can't hide what God has helped you to get. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. And guess what? He wants it also to be a testimony for you that will bring glory to his name. So that might be okay. Now you just finished purchasing the land and you don't, you're not bothered about changing the documents to bear your name. Okay, now you, you may just suffer a delay. Because now the angels that are supposed to bring the things for the house, they, they come, but they don't find the land bearing your name. You may not understand what I'm telling you. So get those things done. Get those things sorted out. Get the right approval from the right authorities. And then you start. You say, how do I start? I don't know. Start. <laughs> it's good. So, your architect friend comes and like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, let's design the house first. And he brings the design. You look at it. Does your spirit okay is it? And you look at there are some other details that the Lord may have dropped in your heart. Maybe from your even childhood. You remember something. That I said, when I build my house, everything now will begin to come alive. I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. Everything will begin to come alive. Like, oh yeah, let's let's put this, let's create this here, let's create this. Here. And let me tell you something: don't think figures, don't think money when you're working with God. If He's told you build a house, and you see the land, look at the size of the land. What can this land carry? Then check your spirit. What can your spirit agree with? So I'm not saying go and build, go and tell yourself, okay, now nah, I will build one mansion. <laughs> no, neither do you say I'll just build a big and go and live inside. Check what your spirit can carry. Don't get into compromise. Don't say, since God said I'll build the house now, then let me go and take a loan. <laughs> For example, there are many of you that God is going to be calling into political office. Because we're, we're, this is a year, this is an election year. You know what I mean? As in this is the year of do campaigns will start because next year is the year of election. So, so many of God's children are going to be called into the year of politics. Now let me warn you. Don't borrow money. The moment you borrow money to execute that project, the hand of God is taken away from it. It must be done by faith and the fulfillment of prophecy. That is how you will know if God truly has spoken. If the money doesn't come, relax. Just relax. Don't borrow. I'm telling the truth now. The moment you take a loan, say, look, say God said, money is not coming, no. let me go and borrow money. And then you step out and take a loan. The Spirit of God will depart from that project. Even if God has spoken, he will depart. Why? Because you have already started tampering with the testimony. And the moment you start tampering with the testimony, you are moving that thing into the hands of the devil. So it means even if God makes you, it gets you into that office, there, he, he can't take the glory, number one. Number two, he cannot fulfill the things he wants to fulfill because he will not put you in an office for office sake. He's not going to make you a governor or a minister or a president or um, a local government chairman or whatever elected position. He's not going to put you there and then he's like, ah, see what God did for me now. It's time for me to enjoy. No, sir. Everything God is doing, he's doing it on purpose. If he puts you to become a governor, brothers and sisters, he has something for you to accomplish there. How are you going to accomplish it when your way there is corrupted? So you see, you lose, you lose the way. Now he gets you in there, he says, son, there's something I want you to say, <laughs> Lord, hmm, yeah, it will be hard though, because <laughs> Ah, that by you know, even when I got there, now you see, now I have loan to pay, so I have to sort out some things. And 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 you see, you see how you begin to corrupt it, and then God cannot use you anymore. So you are just a waste. Now watch it, because what I'm sharing with you, this is how Satan gets in line into God's plan, 
and begins to corrupt it and at the end of the day, it loses its value. So don't say, God said I should build the house so hey, I can actually go and take a loan. This is it's God. He will pay the loan. No, sir, that is gross irresponsibility. Wait patiently and observe everything God is doing. Observe. An opportunity comes. Money comes. What can the money buy? It can buy the first hundred bags of cement. Then start. Oh, call the person building for you. Say, hey, guess what? I have got hundred bags of cement. Oh, wow. Okay, let's start. And then you send the money. They begin to do the work. And then you go there. Listen, why do you go, go there as often as you can? Why? To stir up your faith. To stir up your faith. You get to that place. You see the workers walking and you say, Father, you are so good. You are so good. Oh, look at what you're doing, Lord. Wow. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, most times as you're leaving that place, another kind of favor will rest upon you. And someone will just call you and say, Hey, uh, where are you? I'm just coming from my side to your site. They say, yeah. Uh, your building. Yeah, I'm building my house. Ah, uh, where? So, so, so please. Ah, you didn't tell me. Oh, yeah, well, you sent me your account number. I said, ah, how can you be building? You didn't tell me. I said, ah, let me send you my little contribution. And whoosh, two million naira. <laughs> you take your tithe out. And you remember the Lord. See, listen, you are going to make so much progress this year. I'm telling you the truth. You take your tithe out because Moses said, you shall remember the Lord your God for he is the one that gives you power to get well. So you take out your tithe immediately and say, Lord, Lord, you've blessed me. You've blessed me. You know what, Lord? I, I want to give. Just direct me. Where, where should I send this tithe to? Where should I send this money to? That's the thing you must do first. Do it first as a mark of honor to the Lord. And they say, Lord, you've got, you receive two million. They say, Lord, you've got 200,000 with me right now. What do you want me to do with it? And he tells you, so send it to Susan Sue. Yeah. Or send, 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 send 50,000 to Susan Sue. Send 150 to Susan Sue. You know, he, he, he instructs like that. It's his money. The tithe belongs to him. You don't give it wherever you want to give it. No, 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 no. That's not how to operate this year. Listen, this is a year of accuracy. What I'm sharing with you is... Guess what? Even when you're saying to him, Lord, what would you have me do? What You are introducing faith to your titan because faith comes by hearing. So when God tells you, send it to so and so person, you say, oh, what has come? Faith has come. So when you act on it, faith, God is pleased. You say, ah, call the person building for you. Say, hey, I know that money has come in. I'm sending you 1.8 million now. Go buy the things you need to buy. And then you send it and you're rejoicing before the Lord. You have sown seeds in tight. So there is great expectation coming now. And then you are just believing and praising the Lord. You think about it. You worship him and you thank him. Soon money begins to come. It comes and it comes. It comes and it comes. Now, now you may not receive 20 million. You may not receive 50 million. You may just be receiving five, five hundred thousand. I'm telling you the truth. One day you will get to that site and you say, whoa, look what the Lord has done. And you will look at it and you, you will try to think of what effort. Was it your salary? That's your salary that's just a hundred thousand. No, it's not. This is the work of God. The same thing you will, the same way you must approach everything first of all listen to what the lord is saying concerning you every prophecy that's why you must fellowship with him that's why you must pray that's why you must fast what is the lord saying to me this year you just need to get the word out of his mouth well lord, what's your plan for me this year what's your plan and so you'll begin to see it you'll begin to see it you'll begin to see it you hear it inside you. There'll be a confirmation from the outside. Someone will walk up to you and say, hey, I, I heard God tell me concerning you. He says, this is what he's planning. Oh, now, now you've already received it in your heart. If you haven't received it in your heart yet, say, okay, oh, thank you. Prayer point. You go before Lord. So, so person just told me this. Was that you? You must get your personal confirmation. This is not yet to say, well, two prophets came to my house and they say, God, I've said I'll become the next governor. Right? Go and find out yourself too. So you're not misled. 
And it may be true, but is it the right time? How do you know it's the right time? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the lamp shows you where to walk and when to walk. The light shows you where you're going. Praise God. Our time is up to you. It's just like I should just continue this thing. Praise God. Listen to me. God is building his children. This is their season. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let your word be so as you have spoken. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye.